Hi everybody, this is Robert Pryor Studios and this is another video looking at some of the new features in R16. Um, this time I'm going to take a look at the motion tracker. So we've got the motion tracker here which is a new tool. I'm just going to open this up and drag it over here so we can kind of keep an eye on what it is. Now, we're only going to use a few buttons in here because it's actually a really simple setup. And I've got some footage which I'm going to load in in a second and just show you how it works. Um, but before that, I just want to make sure that I've got my project settings open here. Um, so you can see this is the, just the default, and it's running at uh, uh, 30 frames per second, um, and the standard kind of 90 frames in my timeline here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, uh, not the motion tracker, you can if you want, I'll just show you. You can go in here and you can start adding things. You can drag your footage into here, and then you can start the 2D tracking, and then you can go into the 3D um, making the reconstruction there, um, which is just the camera solve and everything. Um, but we don't need to do that. You can actually skip a couple of steps if you want to. You can press this button, the full solve, and that will automatically do the first few steps for you. Um, it will do everything from, let's just find some. So I'm going to use this, this footage here, which is called Alley. Now, what you can see here is that it's loaded the footage up uh, and we're still just using this one object here and we have a few settings just kind of pop themselves into here. You can see what we're looking at memory wise. We can see the total amount of frames. You can see in the timeline that it's already added the right amount of frames to be able to house the shot that I, or the footage that I shot, um, which I just shot wandering around um, near my house. Uh, this is just phone footage, so it's not particularly pretty. Um, it's looking lower resolution here than actually is because if you look here, the footage Ali spelt badly. Um, the dimensions are 1920 by 1080, but what you're seeing in the viewport is this downsampled version, uh, which is 640 by 360. Um, that just helps to kind of let the tracker do its work without having to to find its way through some very high resolution information. So down here in the bottom left, you can see preloading footage, um, and this is the frame count. Uh, you can see it's taking a little while, um, but that's okay. It's uh, it's almost there now, just uh, 40 odd frames left. And what that will do, it will add a camera, uh, which will be the kind of the camera which is has the the, the tracked data applied to it, um, and then all of the the tracking points. Um, you can go in and manually adjust so those tracking points if you need to. So if you want to kind of remove one, if you see one which is particularly bad and it doesn't stick, then you can go in and you can remove it. And you can select these all individually. So the solve's finished and you can see now we've got the, the motion tracker. If we open it up, we've got the camera I just told you about and the auto features and this is all the tracking points. And they're just nulls as you can see. Uh, if you really want to, you can go in and you can change how they're displayed. Uh, I quite like the dots. Uh, but um, that's up to you. Uh, it's easy enough to do. Now, if we just have a, a quick pan around, you can see, hopefully you can pick up, you can see this looks like a kind of an alleyway already, although it does kind of drift off up into the sky a bit, but that's just the the, the points that it's managed to track. Uh, you can also, if you want, just get rid of some of these extraneous ones. You don't need to, to keep those points. If you don't want them, it won't matter. Uh, if they're kind of getting in the way, either because they're they're badly tracked or whatever, just delete them. That's fine. So we have this here, and you can see we've got the camera. Everything's right. If I just go to Alt D, uh, sorry, uh, Command D, you can see I've been on a PC too long. Um, our project settings are all adjusted, so we've got 234 frames and so on. That's all done, don't have to worry about it. If we come up to our render settings, you can also see that this has been changed for us. So this is 1920 by 1080, um, which has all been done by that whole process. I've not had to go in and set that up. Now, if I go back to my solved camera, you can see the tracking points for the camera, or the keyframes for the, the camera animation. Um, you can see all that in there. Now, if I look through that camera, just set this playing, you'll see that all those points pretty much are nicely stuck to, to the, the scene. Uh, now, we're going to use some of these points in a minute just to set this so we can add 
uh, some 3D objects in. So if I just pick a frame, pick a frame that looks quite nice, that looks all right there. What we're going to do is just set up some quick constraints so that the Cinema 4D knows kind of what is up and you know what's where the floor should be, that kind of thing. So at the moment, if I just add a cube, well, where is it? Let's have a look. It's right back behind the camera, and that's no good. We want to be able to locate uh, a point in the scene and drop our object into it. So with the motion tracker selected there, I'm just going to go and add a position constraint. And I'm just going to choose, I think, this one here. It seems like a good place. Now, I don't really need to do anything for that. If I just choose the constraint, feature to position, and that means that this will be the locator for adding 3D objects into our scene. Okay, so I'm going to add the floor now, which is the planar. And to do this, we choose points on this grid, or kind of what where we want our grid to be. Um, so I'm going to choose so that point there. Uh, I'll go for that point there, and maybe that one there. And this, we need to tell it kind of what axis we want. So this is the X, Z axis, so actually it's the Y. And if I choose that, we can sit down here and choose Y. It should go green. There we go. Um, and actually, I think we can just see that it's upside down because we have an arrow pointing downwards. Um, and that's because I must have clicked these in the wrong order. If you do them the other way around, then the arrow will be up. But that's easily fixed. We can choose it and we can reverse the axis. And that should be solved. Okay, so one more thing to do, and that's our kind of up axis, our actual Y axis. So we need to tell it, even though we've told it this, the ground is facing that way, we need to tell it something in the scene, the tracked scene, which is going in that direction. So I'm probably going to take that point there and that point there. Let's. I have I don't know why this is doing this recently. It's giving problems, so I'm just going to choose the motion tracker. Let's go through this way. So this is our vector constraint. Sorry, I should have just mentioned that. And I'm going to choose. Let's choose. I'm looking for two points that are kind of on that wall in a, a vertical kind of alignment. So I'm going to go for that one and that one. No, I don't like that. So what I'm going to do is just delete that and start again. Let's go for two slightly closer together. Yeah, I'm a bit happy with those. Okay, let's just back out into our normal perspective view. and see what we've got here. So you can see, hopefully you can see this. You can see that arrow, the, the uh, our ground aligning thingy there is um, the, the let's zoom in a bit more for you. You can see that that is now pointing upwards and it's pretty much our triangle is stuck to the floor uh, as we would expect it to be. Um, so hopefully if we add an object to the scene and you know our, our y-axis bar there is looking good now uh, we can see even though I'm just going to highlight this as a, a, a thing so even though this is our locator and uh, it looks very close on the floor um, to our ground plane um, if we back off and actually see that that's our ground plane and there's our locator here so this is our new kind of zero 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 world space and uh, that's all that's done um, but that's actually not that close Hopefully, that's not going to be an issue. So if we go and add a sphere to the ground, um, I'm going to just look and lift that up. So I'm just going to go into object mode, grab the sphere, lift that up so it sits on the floor. Let's just say plus 100 in the Y. That should now look good. Um, I'm going to need to bring it a little bit closer to the camera. Um, let's just... So what I'm doing here is I've just selected the motion tracker so I can see where this triangle was because that's really where I want the, the sphere to, to appear. So I'm just going to slide that back 
to around there, we should now find that this is, I'm going to move it across, because as I move this you can just see that the walls, the tracked walls, which uh, you can see all the points, uh, it was just overlapping slightly. Um, let's go into our main 3D view, and you can see now it's pretty well stuck to the floor. Now I can go in if I wanted to and just start, you know, messing around. Uh, I'm projecting this this texture onto the uh, onto some very simple geometry. In fact, I probably only need two planes: one for this wall and one for this floor, and then one maybe with a a little extra geometry just to kind of bulk out for some of those leaves. Project the texture onto it, and then you could have this ball bouncing across. Uh, which I think would make a really interesting tutorial actually so I might well do that at some point very soon so look out for that um, sign up to the newsletter if you want uh, and that's probably going to be a good way to to keep updated without having to return to this page because that'll end up on the, the main tutorial page so let's just go back to the beginning and play this through so we can make sure it's all stuck that's looking really cool uh, it's done exactly what I want you can see that the, the world grid there is changing pretty nicely um, and it's all sticking as I want it to. Um, so yeah, that's how the, the motion tracker works in its simplest form. And um, I'll f in fact save this scene uh, and we'll continue from here in, the, in another tutorial where I'll actually talk about adding materials and doing the projection and everything. So I think that's quite an interesting thing to do. We might even change it up and have a character walking down here or something else, something more dynamic than just a ball because you know, We've all seen the shiny balls before, I've, I've done hundreds of those. Okay, I'll see you all again soon.